We've been waiting a very long time for Dynamics to let us taste its new flight sim. Aces over Europe was in the back of the minds of thousands of flight sim fanatics since it was announced as a project over a year and a half ago. Now that it's finally here, there's some question to why it took Dynamics so long to produce something of this caliber. In truth, not much has been changed but the location on the world map. The tall res graphics that were bragged about before the release of the game only improve the aesthetic slightly and serve more to hinder the running speed. The improved artificial intelligence is noticeable. The opposing veteran and expert pilots definitely have their wits about them, and you'll find yourself plummeting to the earth in flaming wreckage more and more as you play the game. One can almost say the game occasionally cheats, hitting you with an impossible shot, turning too sharply, or shattering the physical limits of an aircraft without that aircraft suffering apparent damage. This can sometimes be more frustrating than challenging. Attacking a bomber formation on expert mode is certainly a death wish, especially if the bombers have escorting fighters. Don't expect to even make it within 20 millimeter range of a bomber in formation without being lethally harassed by 50 caliber fire up the wazoo. Flying a career on any setting above standard skill level is almost impossible. If you do choose a high difficulty level, don't expect to get very far. You'll find yourself up against twice your number on scramble missions, and either the aim of your enemy will improve tremendously, or the survivability of your plane will drop by half, or both. After a time, you'll find that in a career, the favorite side to play is the Axis. Not necessarily for political or moral reasons, I assure you, but it does help having your home turf below, so when your plane becomes shot full of holes, you'll have a friendly reception when you and your parachute reach German soil. The Folkwolf 190 is an excellent example of German engineering and a good choice of braving a career. They're fast, as tough as nails, and have great firepower to boot. As you progress through a career, don't fall prey to the temptation of those high-tech jet aircraft. Though they are fast and well-armed, they have low maneuverability, and those newfangled jet engines just aren't very dependable. Flying in a Mosquito, one of Britain's fast attack fighter bombers, gives the pilot a true sense of power. With twin radial engines that can propel the craft to speeds exceeding 400 miles per hour and the optional 57 millimeter cannon that can sink a ship, the inaptly named aircraft is one of the more intimidating species of insects known to the Germans. The Mosquito was used primarily for ground and shipping strikes as well as aerial reconnaissance. It was effective in all roles due to its high speed and more than adequate firepower. This German escort ship is no match for rocket wraps mounted beneath the Mosquito's wings. Flying for the Allies is a real test of piloting skill. Those Jerrys are out for blood and they will give no quarter. The Spitfire is a formidable flying machine and probably one of the safest bets when flying against the Nazi scourge. This British plane is well armored and packs a 20 millimeter punch. When flying for the US, it's better to choose a plane that's more heavily armed and armored, like the P-38 or P-47, rather than the fast and maneuverable P-51 Mustang. You may not survive the fight, but you'll last a whole lot longer than you would flying a lighter plane. This may not be true to life. There's a real possibility that in the 8th Air Force of 1944, a wing of P-51s could handle a troop of F-190s any day of the week. But considering the pilots who you end up flying with in the many aces over Europe missions, it is better to stick with flying the tougher planes. Your comrades, it seems, regardless of the side you fly for, are supreme idiots. They are novice pilots who often don't survive 30 seconds after contact with the enemy, leaving you all alone to face three or sometimes four German planes. When all the perimeters discussed earlier culminate to form sudden loss of altitude in a burning hulk of a bullet-riddled plane, you will be greeted at the bottom. If you do manage to bail out by a not-so-friendly German soldier, and you will spend the duration of the war behind bars in a prison camp. That's why it's not a good idea to fly a campaign as an Allied airman. Granted, Sierra's little brother, Dynamics, has come a distance in flight sim evolution since the release of Aces Over the Pacific, but given the time they've had at the drawing board, the changes apparent in Dynamics' new baby just aren't good enough. Better luck next time, Dynamics!